Well, hello, this is Jay Mahaffey at the Bayer Scott Learning Center in Scott, Mississippi. I've been getting a lot of phone calls the last few days about making early applications of PGRs to plant growth regulators to cotton fields in the 2020 season. I thought I'd take a few minutes this evening and talk about some of the things we ought to consider when we start making that decision. A couple of things about this before we get too deep into it. A lot of the data we generate is generated to characterize varieties. What we're trying to do in that is learn about varieties and how they respond to plant growth regulators differentially. Uh, population, field history, and all of the things that, that are present in the field, including the variety, are important to consider in this decision-making process. Don't take this data today to assume that you ought to go manage any specific field in a certain way or exactly as I present to you in these slides. I'm going to talk about some of the, so some of the fundamentals that need to be considered in making the decisions. Every field still has to be evaluated individually. We need to understand what's going on in that field to make the, the best decision we can for the best outcome. A lot of cotton fields are getting ready to take the first shot of PGR this year. Uh, when you th start thinking about the things to consider in that decision-making process, the field history is important. The, the past crop grown, is it cotton on cotton or cotton on corn, those kinds of things. Also, if you have a field that historically has been a growth control problem, that's another case to consider too. The irrigation status of the field, is it irrigated or dry land? That's important uh, in the whole process. We can be a little more aggressive in some of the irrigated production than we can in some dry land. The current field conditions influence the decision, as in, <clears throat> is it currently wet or dry? What's the standing population in the field? The plant health, are the plants diseased? Have they had thrips or some sort of herbicidal damage? And the weather forecast for the immediate future all can play a part in the decision-making process. Variety is a huge component of this. If you're growing some of these less, less determinate later season varieties, particularly in the northern edge of the mid-southern cotton belt, we need to consider that very carefully because one of the influences we can have on earliness is the timely and proper use of PGRs in the early season in those varieties. And I fully acknowledge through this conversation that, that everybody's personal style is a little bit different. And we have to understand that we start to apply these principles and make decisions about applying plant growth regulators during 2020. Now, there are a few things about growth regulator, regulators that are worth mentioning in this conversation. We talk about mepiquot chloride in whatever format or form or stance. Uh, we need to understand that the effect is long-lasting in the plant. If we put some on early, it's typically in there late, or at least the effect lingers into the later season. And also, plant growth regulators are active at a dry weight concentration, which is kind of a fancy way of saying the bigger plant I have, the more I have to put on to get above the concentration that, that gives me the effect of getting some growth control. We talk about the, the things and how they interact. The amount of growth regulator applied in the rate the timing of those early applications is important because if I put some on early, in a lot of cases, I can, I can put less on through the later season and still get above the threshold that gives me growth control. That's where plant size plays a part and also the previous applications. All of those factors interact to influence the decision we ought to make through the early season. Now, every year at Scott, we run a program here to evaluate new cotton varieties and see how they respond to growth regulation. Through that program, we plant an intentionally very growthy uh, plot or set of plots here on the site. We do that to, to look at how new varieties should be managed in a, in a certain setting. What we wind up doing is we plant in on this deep silty sand out here at Scott, uh, behind a corn crop, conventionally tilled, late so that it grows fast and comes up in the heat, uh, about 50,000 seeds that high population is planted to encourage that vegetative growth. When you think about what we're trying to do in this case, we're trying to encourage growth so that we can then see how the different varieties respond to the growth regulation treatments we then apply. We also put about 130 pounds of N on those trials, and that's done, that's a little bit of an over-fertilization in a lot of cases, and it's done to, to uh, exacerbate some of these growth control issues we're trying to evaluate. The lessons we learn from this are, are equally useful to carry out in the conventional fields on a commercial scale. 
I would not necessarily go out and try to grow cotton like this here at Scott, Mississippi. As a matter of fact, I'd almost certainly do a few things different. But this is how we do these experiments. So when we talk about the rates and timings of PGRs that we use, we have three treatments that we put in this trial every year. One of those is an untreated check, so it doesn't get any growth regulator applied at all. We also have two other regimes that we'll put into these trials. One is an aggressively managed treatment, which typically starts at about the eight, seven or eight node stage in the plants, and we start with relatively high rates. The alternative treatment to that is a passively managed system. It typically starts about 12 nodes or about two weeks after the aggressive begins at somewhat reduced rates. On the left side of the screen here, you see what we did in 2018, and on the right side, that's 2019, which are two very different years. And my intent in this, in this conversation today is to contrast the experience in the two years and give you some food for thought to use in 2020. Now, one of the pieces of data we take, and I won't nearly be able to show it all to you in 10 minutes tonight, but one of the pieces of data we take at the end of the year is the plant height. When you start to look at what the difference between 2018 and 2019, you'll see our untreated control plants in 2018 wound up about 80 inches, 79 inches tall. When you look at the uh, passive treatment in 2018 and 2019 for that matter, even though they were very different years, we knocked about 20 inches out of the height, the finished plant height of those. And as we were more and more aggressive with the growth regulators, whether it was in rate and or timing, we were able to further reduce the height of the plants. When you look at it, though, you'll notice two things or something about the difference in the years. 2019, our plants finished the year about 60 inches tall. So 2019 was not a year where growth management would as a, was as a great premium in our production system here at Scott. And the, the two different years and contra contrasting the data that way provides us some lessons I think we can use in making decisions for 2020. When you look at the lint yields, you'll see uh, some interesting things. And by the way, I put these graphs on the same, approximately the same scale so you can look across them. You see in 2018, our untreated check plants wound up about, uh, yielded about 650 pounds an acre. As we applied the passive treatment, which is delayed in timing and at a reduced rate, we more than double, almost double the yield versus the untreated check. And as we're a little more aggressive, we continue to, to increase a yield a little bit. There's also a large varietal interaction in there that has to be acknowledged, and we'll talk about varieties a little bit in this video and more in some others over the next couple of weeks. However, when you look at 2019, you'll notice that our untreated check uh, plots yielded about 1,330 pounds on average across all the varieties we tested. So that's more than double what we would yield or yield historically in our untreated plots at Scott. But even in a year where growth control was not at such a premium, you see that we still increased the, the lint yield per acre about 400 pounds by applying the passive treatment. And for the first time in a, in a long time, or maybe the first time I remember, you see that we actually decreased the yield of some of the aggressive treated plots in 2019. That's primarily because the earlier season varieties we tested in 2019 didn't need the very aggressive treatments that we applied to them in some cases. So let's talk about that a little bit. When you look at the varietal response from 2019, it tells you a lot about what we need to consider when we make these decisions. The varieties earlier than about 1725 in 2019, as we applied the, the passive treatments, we helped those plants to reallocate energy somewhat from a vegetative state back into reproductive growth, which makes lint and seed, which is what we're after for yield. However, as we were very aggressive in our growth management regimes in, in 2019, those earlier varieties really didn't need it. And in fact, they actually paid a penalty as we got a little too aggressive with growth management. However, if you look at the later season things from about 1835 up, as we were born more aggressive, we really didn't pay a penalty in yield in, in few, if any, of the cases for being more aggressive with growth management. And the implication to that of that to us practically is if I know that the the danger in the cotton growing away from me and having too growthy of a field and the difficulty in management is associated with some of these later season varieties, even in a year when growth control was not at such a premium, it didn't hurt me to be a little more aggressive. 
And that's one of those subtle things to consider in this decision-making process through 2020. Now, each year is different and, can, and will likely require a different response. I think that's pointed out in the data I just showed. The early PGR applications typically enable a better response to the later applications. The PGR applications from this point, from this seven or eight st node stage on out through the rest of the year, will be really dictated by how the field behaves, how it's growing as we grow or as we monitor and measure the growth of the plants through the rest of the 2020 season. Timing has more effect than the rate of the PGR applied in a lot of cases. The timing that we typically start with in our aggressive treatment is in that seven or eight node range. Uh, and the rates that we're talking about, whether they're for some sort of a mepiquot chloride uh, product, uh, is t are typically, those rates are typically range from about six to about 16 ounces an acre. If we're talking about Stance, which is a growth regulator from Bayer, we're talking about rates in that two to four ounce range. The important point in this, and really the point of the conversation today, is it, it is there's value in many fields to do something at that early timing, whether it is applying a reduced rate of a growth regulator or acknowledging the fact that those fields have the potential, some fields have the potential to be very growthy. They have uh, varieties in them that present a growth control issue in some regions. That early timing is the one that matters because it sets us up for a better reaction when we come back and make the later applications. And through that, we will have some more of these videos in the 2020 season and see uh, and talk through some of the plant monitoring and some of the factors to consider when you make some of these mid and late season applications. If there's anything we can do to help, uh, if you'd like to talk about this in more detail or see the data in more detail, drop me a note at the email on the screen or call me at my, that's my mobile phone, uh, phone number on the screen. We'll be happy to try to help. Your local Bayer reps are always around to try to help also. We look forward to seeing you at the Learning Center this summer. Thanks for listening.